the term Juneteenth comes from June and 19th put together. And that's how we get Juneteenth. And so why was this so important? And why was this on June 19th, 1865? So well, let's look at this timeline. We have President Lincoln outlawing slavery in the Confederacy, January 1st, 1863. We have the Civil War going from, continuing from that time until 1865. And what happened is, is that many slaveholders go to Texas to escape the effects of the war and to maintain their level of enslavement. Because you have to think back to the time period in 1865. Texas is a very new state, right? It was, it was called the Wild Wild West for a reason. As uh, the nation expanded westward, people were creating the rules as they went along. And so Texas became this refuge where they could maintain the status quo, even though we were fighting an entire civil war to establish that slavery would end and eventually get the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, which would give citizenship and other rights to formerly enslaved people. June 1st, 1865, General Lee, who's the head of the Confederacy, surrenders. But it's not until June 19th that General Granger arrives in Texas because, right, we have to remind young folks, I'm, you know, in my 40s, so I remember a time before cell phones. <laughs> I remember when people didn't even have phones in their homes, right? If you couldn't afford a landline, I had a black and white TV. So like, I could imagine these kinds of things, right? But right now with younger folks, you have to explain, it took a long time to communicate information in 1865. So General Granger has to physically ride on a horse to Texas to inform the slaves and the slaveholders of the surrender of General Lee, of the emancipation and there were concerted efforts to try to stop the spread of the news. And there's evidence suggesting that someone else before General Granger was sent and did not make it there alive. And so when this information reaches Texas on June 19th, it becomes like the last place within the United States where this news is finally heard that the war is over and that slaves would be freed. So now let's fast forward to now, why celebrate Juneteenth, right? America already has an Independence Day. It's coming up soon, it's a great big holiday. But the importance of it is to recognize that America has more than one Independence Day. July 4th, 1776, America declared independence from British rule, but they did not extend those freedoms to many of its residents. And citizenship itself was not even granted to all natural born citizens until the 14th Amendment after the Civil War. So now that we have slavery outlawed all throughout the United States, the last set of slaves are informed and Juneteenth has now become an unofficial second Independence Day, or as many people like to call it, Emancipation Day. So many states observe and recognize the holiday Texas was the first state, unsurprisingly, to declare Juneteenth a state holiday. And uh, it deemed it so in 1980. As of 2020, 47 states officially recognized Juneteenth as a state holiday or a day of observance. But Juneteenth is still not a federal holiday. And a fun fact, as a senator, Barack Obama co-sponsored legislation to make Juneteenth a national holiday, though it didn't pass then or while he was president. And in 2021, there's still a renewed push to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. Now, given the congressional makeup right now, probably not something that's going to make it through Congress in 2021. But the goal is to keep it as part of the national memory and to keep national attention and observance in the forefront of people's minds so that we remember that our history makes us what we are today. So I see uh, President Andy McGrath has the flag behind him. So LJ Graff designed the Juneteenth flag. It has red, white, and blue to reflect the American flag. A star in the middle for Texas, the Lone Star State. And the second largest star represents emancipation as it expanded to other residents within the United States. And I keep saying residents because remember, Everyone in the United States was not considered a citizen, even though they were born and raised there and had been there for generations. 
that is a much more recent um, development within the United States. And so that's what this flag represents. So here are some Juneteenth traditions if you are looking to celebrate Juneteenth. We have barbecues and outdoor celebrations, a lot like 4th of July. And in 1870, several in the Black community purchased Emancipation Park in Houston, Texas, because segregation left them with no access to public parks. So a lot of you may not know the history of that, even though there are a lot of public facilities for a very, very long time, it was not open to all members of the public because they were segregated, right? So this is where we get the separate but equal. They have to start making separate public accommodations. Um, and then obviously that went away um, at the Brown versus Board of Ed when the Supreme Court declared that separate was inherently unequal because the point of the separation was to deny certain people access. Here you see uh, these group of individuals pool their money together and they purchase a park and make it a public park where they can celebrate. Some of the things you'll notice are uh, Marcus Garvey salad has red, black, and green beans. And Marcus Garvey is actually um, a Jamaican national who came to the United States and joined the Black Liberation Movement. One of the reasons why uh, a salad is named after him because he believed, like these individuals did, that we can pull our resources and create our own enterprises and our own businesses, then we can continue to lift ourselves up out of all the remnants of slavery. And so that is one of the traditions. Another tradition is the red drink. And I was hoping to have a red drink with me, but I have tea today, so I'm just gonna have my tea. But a red drink represents the bloodshed of slaves in the slave trade, the, in the practice of chattel slavery, and the bloodshed of soldiers who fought in the war for freedom. But red foods and drinks are also a nod to the culture of the ancestors from Yoruba and Congo who were brought to Texas in the 19th century. From, and those areas represent present day Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, Benin, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And so if you want more information about the uh, history, the culinary history tied uh, to these foods, you can visit Michael Twitty's blog, Afro Culinaria. And there's a really, really good special on Netflix right now um, called High on the Hog, which traces the history of food within, especially the American South, back to the places in Central and West Africa where a lot of them um, originated and that are now a popular part of American um, culture and food. Another great way to make this red drink Strawberries, watermelon juice, hibiscus tea, which is my favorite, and it's known as sorrel in the Caribbean. Um, if you add a little ginger and sweeten it up. And of course, many soft drinks have a red colored drink and Kool-Aid and red soda and all of these other things. So the name of the series, Chrissy, is High on the Hog. Yep, thank you, Anaya. So what can you do this year to celebrate Juneteenth if you want to celebrate? And if you're like me, I didn't start celebrating till I moved to Florida in the South and start attending events, which I also I always found awesome. And because I'm such a nerd, of course, I always got to look into all these different things. I love going to lectures, museums, etc. But as we emerge from this quarantine and hopefully are able to socialize safely, here are some suggestions. You can hold listening and essential conversations about race like we're doing today. And I'm looking very much forward to hearing from the judge and her thoughts. Uh, celebrate and recognize the contributions of your Black employees, co-workers, leaders, and stakeholders. You'll probably see that a lot on social media and commercials. You can recommend, buy, or donate children's books on Juneteenth or Black history and share them with your local school district, share them with your friends and family. Um, you can lobby for changes and reform in inequitable policies, laws, and programs. You can advocate for making Juneteenth a federal holiday and use your social media platforms to promote Juneteenth and to celebrate Black culture and Black history throughout the day. So I hope you enjoy this little stroll through the history of Juneteenth. Um, if you have any questions, you know, let me know. I'd love to hear from you.